going to be um, reviewing a rezoning proposal. Based on the annexation and rezoning of some property on Highway 41, um, zoning matter at number is 2021-PZ01. Um, I'd like to Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask Mike Brownfield to explain a little bit to us about what the proposal is. In fact, you, you should have uh, the letter dated January 26, 2021, which we just read off the application for rezoning for uh, 3930 North Highway 41. Uh, all, all the correct paperwork has been sub submitted to the city. We advertise by law for the PSD hearing and for the follow-up hearing for mayor and council. And uh, that's what we're here for tonight. We do have some people here in the audience. I just want to remind everybody, uh, this is our chair of the meeting. If you have any questions or, or any, any, anything to ask, please direct your questions to the chair. Don't, you know, no back and forth for everybody. So we, we get this uh, done in an orderly manner. Uh, should have paperwork there in the folder to go through the questions and and if they'll give their name and address right. if they want to address so we'll have it in the record are there any proponents for the discussion on the rezoning i will say mr yeah. Lord, when Jay is here he's, okay. he's the proposed developer of the project well, before we do that, we probably need to go through this list of uh, uh, items here and, and tell you what's on this proposal. And uh, is that what you would like to do, Becky? For this? Um, generally, I think we hear from the proponents and opponents and then deliberate based on what they said and go through your questions. Um, of course, you said Mr. Wingate is here. He's actually the applicant or one of the owners of the property. If he wants to briefly speak about the um, request for rezoning. Now, it is important to understand you're not here for plan approval. You're here for a recommendation to Mayor Council to vote on with regard to the rezoning request. Mr. Wingate, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, sir, I will. Okay. You're welcome to just come up here. First off, I'd like to say good evening. My name is Dylan Wingate, owner and operator at WCH Homes. Uh, we are proposing rezoning of the land on Highway 41 and Dunbar Road to the annexation of, um, excuse me, from R1 to R2A. Uh, we plan to put homes on this site, make it a very unique development. We have it's taken- right here, WCH, It's not R2A, it's R2. I'm R2, I apologize. We have taken uh, all the adequate measures to ensure that the items that the city and county have asked us about are being taken care of in the right way and that we do this development in the best way possible we can that suits everyone around it as well. Uh, we look forward to it and thank you all for having me this evening. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else I'd like to speak on behalf of this? Are there any opponents to the would you like to come up and sure. talk to us? Yeah. My name is Mike Kensall. I reside at 301 Mary Sue Lane, Warner Robins. Uh, I do not live in the city of Centerville, at least not yet. Um, as far as Mr. Uh, Wingate, is it? Okay. Uh, I have no problem at all with his aspirations for development. My only concern about the development is density. As I understand it, the lots will be 60 feet wide as an R2. Um, I'm concerned about the density. I've got, I have friends that live in the subdivision that's still under development to the south of the property where he's purchased. Uh, as I understand it, this zoned R2. Um, on nights and weekends, it's like driving through a slalom course. The lots are so small. Most everybody's garages are filled with stuff. Their cars are in the driveway and out on the road. And it's a maneuver just to get through to visit people. Um, I would like 
for the zoning to be changed to R1, just to give more room for people to get their cars off the street, into the yard, into the garage. Um, if, or maybe a compromise of having a tiered uh, R1 and R2 arrangement. But that's my only concern. I don't have any problem with development. You know, that's not an issue for me at all. It's just, it's so dense. That's my concern. So would you like to? My name is Will Vinson. I live at 1209 North House and Lake Boulevard. And my mom lives at 1205 North House and Lake Boulevard. It's been a family farm for over 100, 100 years or so. I have a pecan orchard across the street from where the development's going to be. And I also agree with Mike that uh, it's gonna, the density is going to be pretty, it's going to change the whole atmosphere of the area where we live as far as, you know, traffic and they, they've already had, they've already had to widen the Dunbar Road because there was no shoulders. Now there's, <laughs> there's some shoulder, but very little. So I'm just concerned about the traffic and it being going from, you know, farm area to more dense, you know, subdivision type area. So um, I agree with pretty much what everything Mike said as well. Hi, my name is Millie Sapp. I live at 1018 North Houston Lake Boulevard. And like Mike and Will, um, we lived in that neighborhood for over 60 years. And it's always been a rural neighborhood. And we are not against expansion at all. We would just like, to, like Mike said, see this um, zoning change from R2 to R1 so that it is a little bit more conducive to the lots that we have, which are two acres and above. So um, again, we're not, we're not against expansion at all, but Old Stone Crossing that is directly across from my house right now, we were against that for the very reasons that we're seeing now. Those streets are so crowded with cars, especially on nights and weekends. And I just drove through there coming back over here. And they completely blocked the streets. I don't know if, if fire trucks had to get through there or EMTs or police, how they do it safely. And I'm worried about the children that are in that environment because if they're out in the streets and those cars are blocking views, that's a, that's a huge danger. So again, we're not opposed to expansion. It's just we would love to see it as R1 and not R2. Anyone else like to? Hello, my name is Carolyn McKenzie. I live at 1209 Dunbar Road. Actually, my family has lived there ever since the 1800s. I've seen the expansion. I've seen it go from rural to what it is now. And when I really look at the houses being built there, I see just what I'm seeing now, more foot traffic, more criminal trespassing, uh, the crime rate is going up. If you'll look at the analysis, the crime analysis, in reference to the amount of crime that has actually pretty much poured over into the Dunbar community, you will see what a community of housings will bring because this is what happens. Individuals build their homes and it's all about making money. Okay, I know people need a place to live, but they build all these houses and then they're gone. And then it's the Dunbar community that is left with all the crime, all the criminal trespassing, all the foot traffic. A lot of, and even as um, Millie talked about the old stone crossing, we already know it has brought a lot of crime. And even with police officers, I am a police officer, you don't have enough officers to even police the entire area because it is building up so quickly. So it is a problem. It is a concern. The crime is a concern because if we think about each individual, we want to live where there is no crime. Okay, but we know crime is going to come, but it doesn't have to be this way. Okay, everybody goes back to their own community where they live and they want to feel safe. 
okay? They want to feel comfortable in their home. But when that expansion of houses come to Dunbar in 41, the traffic is already atrocious. It's going to be even worse. You know, 41, Dunbar in 41, people can't figure out whether to turn left or right, but they just go straight across the road, damaging other people's property. I think it's a problem. You know, I'm not against you guys building houses somewhere else, but there we love our peace and we've been there for a very long time, just like the rest of the Dunbar community. And I just think they need to build elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak? I know we had some folks came in a little late. <clears throat> um, we'll cover the... Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Ronnie Babbitt. I'm secretary. So we have a list of uh, deliberation to evidence that we, that we uh, need to go through and these will be answered. This is not a question and answer for you. It's just basically stating that the city has done the diligence on answering these questions that have been posed. So I will go through them with, and, uh, and Mike, if you have any questions, can you please fill in the blanks on any concerns that we have on these? Okay. Uh, is the applicant the legal owner of the subject property? And the answer is yes to that. Number two, if not, does the applicant have written permission of the property owner to seek a rezoning of subject property? That, in this case, that is not applicable because we have a legal owner. Number three, what is the designation of this property according to the city's comprehensive land development plan? This property is designation, this property's use designation is urban residential. This character, <coughs> this character area includes an area bounded approximately by U.S. 41, North Houston Lake Boulevard, Gun Road, Thompson Road, and along with a small portion of Thompson Road. Uh, the specific land use allowed in this sur suburban residential area are as follows. Single family detached dwellings in subdivision settings where higher density single family attached are appropriate locations. Mixed use development that are predominantly single family in the nature, but may include single family attached mixed use developments, which contain small scale commercial or office in addition to residential use may be allowed where appropriate. A small scale office development may be located at property locations to serve a small market area in nearby neighborhoods. So Mike, would you mind Clarifying a little bit of that, that's a lot to digest. In that yeah, well, it basically says that the comprehensive land use document for Houston County basically says that it is uh, prominently residential housing in that area with some limited mixed use. Okay. But that's not, there's no other mixed intentions other than single dwelling. Oh, no, this Remember, these questions are your constitutional considerations in analyzing the zoning, rezoning application. And what this tells you, the city's comprehensive plan is a joint comprehensive plan with County, Lawrence, and Perry. And what it tells you is the suburban residential is the character area. It tells you the things that, that can be considered in that area, but you're considering, what you're considering is a request to R2 zoning which does not include anything except single family, okay? Number four, will the, zoning will the zoning decision permit the use that is suitable in the view of the use of the development and adjacent nearby properties? Number five, will the zoning, will the zoning decision adversely affect the existing use of adjacent or nearby properties? Number six, does the property affixed by the zoning decision have reasonable economic use as currently zoned? Number seven, will the zoning decision result in, in a use which will 
or could cause an excessive and burdensome use of existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools. Now, I did, that's also pending traffic studies um, that are deemed necessary. Does the zone, number eight, does the zoning decision conform with the policies and intent of the adopted land use? And that's the city's comprehensive, comprehensive plan. Number nine, do the other do other conditions exist that affect the use of development of the property in question and support their approval or denial of the zoning decision? I would recommend you go back and deliberate on questions four through nine. It's a little difficult to read these things when you're fogged up. <laughs> so excuse me, bear with me, please. Okay, number four, will the judge will the zoning decision permit the use that is suitable in the view of the use and development of adjacent nearby property. So, uh, Mike, do you have any clarification for that? Uh, it just that, that, that it does follow the comprehensive plan, so I don't see where it would. There's no effect right. other than otherwise. Okay. Well, the zoning decision of adversely affect the existing use of adjacent or nearby property. Do you see any issues with this? Well, opponents have voiced their concerns right. about density, crime, uh, traffic, things like that. Um, and obviously with absent controls or any conditions or anything placed on the development, it has the potential to have that. Uh, but remember, this is not plan approval. The traffic control measures, the utilities issues, um, and those things are actually handled at the, at the plan approval level. So does it have the potential for that? It has the potential for that if unregulated, but it's not unregulated here. I'll just say that. There will be studies that are traffic studies that will be done in it has to be done. Once 41's a U.S. highway and the county, Delmar Road belongs oh, okay. to the county. So, and does the property affected by the zoning decision have reasonable economic use as currently zoned? Currently zoned, I mean, it's improvements will be based on the property values of the homes, is that correct? Well, this says, as a property affected by the zoning decision, have a reasonable economic use as it's currently zoned. Not in the city of Centerville, because it doesn't have a city of Centerville zoning classification. It currently has a county zoning classification of R1. And so the city, in the county, yes, it does. It doesn't currently have a city zoning um, classification at this point. The county's property butts up to it is already zoned as R1, is that correct? That's yes. Correct. Uh, does the zoning decision conform to the policy and intent of the adopted land use plan? Yes, it does. Do other conditions exist that that affect the use of the development of the property in question and support their, their either intent, their either approval or denial of the zoning decision. So, currently it's zoned, and all we're doing is making a recommendation based on the uh, proposal from the developer, is that correct? I mean, you're, you're, you're deciding to make a recommendation for approval, approval conditions, or denial. I'm just getting things slow. <laughs> uh, will the zoning decision result in, well, actually, I, I said that because it was pending tariff studies, traffic studies. Okay. The question was, will the zoning de decision result in a use which will or could cause extensive or burdensome use of existing plan existing streets, transportation, facilities, utilities, or school, but that would be based, that information would be based on the pending traffic studies that will be done as required by the county and the city and state. So. What about the school situation? Where, is that 
That is in Hassel County, right? Yes. So that's all still intermingled in there. That's in Hassel County. So, okay. Very good question. Yes. <coughs> so, Bay? None. Well, I'm um, doing this. Direct question. Yeah. Okay. When you assess the uh, traffic plan or, or the study, take a look at our neighborhood that we have right next to us. Uh, Oak Stone Cross, I think it is. So when they when they developed that, that was back during the market when it flopped and then they brought it back up and I think Colonial Bank had most of that property. There's only one true entrance to all those houses and that development's not done. They got a, I probably got a couple hundred acres in there or at least a hundred acres in there to develop more houses. So they got really a technically an illegal entrance on 41. There's no turn lane. In the, in, the, in the development of that property, they bought my neighbor across the street. I live at 1100 next to uh, Millie Sap. Yes, sir. What, can you give us your name? And James address? Harrison. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you're at 1100? North Houston Lake. Thank you. So we're there when they're starting to develop the plan. The neighbors across the road were bought out by the uh, developer so he could have access into Old Stone in the, in the old tree farm state property to up to develop old stone because at the time we were told it was going to cost him a million dollars to put an interest on 41 and move all those large power poles well they since haven't done anything on 41 other than use a two-lane entrance it's really technically illegal there's no turn lane and i don't know how many wrecks they have over there but you can look in our front yard when you go down houston lake road especially her yard and you'll see the tire track where they've Gone through her yard to avoid impact in, 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 into the old stone entranceway. It's, it's, un, it's a regular occurrence into the into the ditch in front of our house. It's it's really unsafe. So when when you say you're going to do a road study, please do because they still got more houses to go in there, and there's only one true entrance into old stone, and that's in front of our house. And it's really it's really unsafe. It's a lot of traffic. Nope, nope. I mean, you know, people nowadays they don't look at the they're looking at the phone and we've had several wrecks out there so i just ask that you if you're going to do studies please do them because i don't know where you're going to get the sewage from unless you come off the pumping station that's in old stone but well, this board doesn't make those decisions at all Always but you mentioned you mentioned traffic plan so i can address that yeah i'm sure you know those, those issues are going to be looked at okay thank you thank you for scanning in the state yeah. Currently, right now, we have a motion for an application for a zoning of R2 for this piece of property. Uh, additionally, as I stated earlier, there, the city, the county has a property abutting adjacent to this, and they have a, uh, a plot of lots that they have calculated out. There's 50 lots in this area. Um, one of the things that I would consider recommending would be to use an R2 designation with, with um, conditions to meet R1 regulations for those properties of budding up to the county's existing property that they have there. And those conditions would be uh, something that we would be recommending that, this, that the developer consider in doing this. So if I understand you right, uh the recommendation would be if approved for the rezoning to be approved for the city of Centerville R2 with the conditions that the bordering lots that border the one, county one through 50 would be also be approved but would be required to meet all one regulation that's correct in the Centerville zone. Is that your motion? That's my motion. Which would mean those lots would be required to be one uh, 90 foot wide instead of 60 foot wide. That's correct. Wow. I have a general question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so this is Houston County R1 to Centerville R2. Is this particular parcel annexed into the city? The request, the application for annexation and rezoning. That's why we're considering here 
we have to, it currently, you cannot just annex it and not rezone it because it does not have a city of Centerville rezoning. The mayor and council will consider your recommendation on the rezoning simultaneously with their consideration of an ordinance to annex the property in. Okay. okay. Thank you. I have a question on something. Is the county specifications of, or I'll call it specifications of R1 and R2 the same as the city of Centerville? R1 and R2, or are they different? The county's R1 regulations would require lots to be 100 foot wide, where in Centerville, it's, they only require to be 90 foot wide. So there is a 10 foot difference. And then the R2 goes down to 60. Correct. So, so what's being proposed is so a transition to of larger wide. lots to smaller lots, a transition between the county R1 and the R2 small lot. So your recommendation for the R1 would be the Centerville uh, of 90? Yes. Correct. The county. Okay. Not the county. Okay. That area here on rural is no sewer out there right now, correct? There will be. It'll be, it'll be on the same, the same place next to it. Well, that's one of the primary reasons um, people do request for annexation in because of not being able to get permits for septic tanks on those lots. Anybody else have any questions, concerns? So, where exactly is the line that you're proposing to be R1? Which lots? They won't be R1. They would be R2. They would be they would be zoned R2 with conditions. Mike will bring this right to show you. You can rezone R2 and place conditions that the lots that they're talking about meet the R1 requirements and be the larger lots, which I believe is what you were maybe right. alluding to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we can make you copies, but remember, this is a concept plan. It hasn't been approved. 